everyone how you doing welcome to another self say so video i hope you're all well this is a requested video so thank you so much for the request and as the title suggests we're going to get into the story of the singer songwriter and actress lisa stansfield but before we get into the video a very very quick disclaimer as always this video is purely done for entertainment informational and commentary purposes it's not to mock anyone it's not to disrespect anyone it's purely various information i found on the interwebs put together into one easy to digest video so we're going to keep it cute we're going to keep it polite we're going to keep it respectful and let's get into the video Lisa Jane Stansford was born on the 11th of April 1966 in Manchester, England. Lisa's family, her mother, father and two sisters moved to Hayward, Greater Manchester and then to Rochdale when Lisa was 12 years of age. Her early musical influences came from soul music and Motown in the likes of Diana Ross, Marvin Gaye, Barry White and Aretha Franklin. Uh, this started with your mom playing the records yeah, as Diana a little kid? Yeah, Diana Ross, yeah. Diana Ross, okay. So I've never met Diana Ross but I feel like I've met her. Because I've sung with her so many times. Oh, in front, yeah, with exactly. Hairbrush. Yeah. Um, but yeah, th that was the first stuff that I really, really put that my ears pricked up to. Yeah. Um, and then, but, you know, Marvin Gaye, a lot of Motown and right. Barry White. Soon enough, Lisa realized that she wanted to become a singer and was already singing at local clubs in her early teens. So I started singing in nightclubs when I was 14 and I was on TV. Then at 14 years old, Lisa entered and won a local talent contest called Search for a Star, which was sponsored by the Manchester Evening News. So I did a talent show in um, Manchester in a little club. Everyone thinks it's like the X Factor on TV and everything. It was in a tiny little club and um, I won. This led to Lisa signing her first recording contract and in 1981, her first single, Your Alibis, was released by Devil Records, according to Wikipedia. Are your Lisa eventually signed to Polydor Records and between 1982 and 1983 she released the following singles The Only Way, and Listen to Your Heart. However, none of the singles entered the charts. There are also a few sources which state that Lisa also released a single called I Got a Feeling during this time, but again, it appears that the single did not enter the charts. Also in 1982, and at the age of 16, Lisa performed Got You On Video on Late Night From 2. Around the same time, Lisa was invited to co-host the children's television music program, Razzmatazz. However, in an interview on Good Morning Britain in 2018, Lisa revealed that around the age of 15, she received unwanted sexual advances. This happened when she was in modeling school. What were you when that happened? I was about 16. Wow. 15 I was, yeah. 15. Wow. That Definitely. was just around the time you won the talent search and you were just sort of really launching your career. Yeah, it would have been because I, I'd first started out on TV mm. and um, I, I watched myself on television and I was terrible. I was like, I stood like that and you I was really it? Was it twined. Um, yeah, I did that after the, like, I did variety shows and I was terrible. So I went to this modelling school for my deport. <laughs> and um, this is where this guy was. Right. And he, he, he's, he's sort of never going to do that again now because he did it to other people in a much more serious way than me. Although being a co-presenter on Razzmatazz was a well-paid job, Lisa believed if she'd continue presenting, nobody would ever take her seriously as an artist. So, she decided to leave the show to pursue her singing career. In a Smash Hits interview in February 1990, it was noted that after Razzmatazz, Lisa was so disillusioned with showbiz that she considered applying for a job in Boots. But in 1986, Lisa, along with former school friends Ian Devaney and Andy Morris, formed the group Blue Zone. A few years prior, according to some sources in 1984, on a chance meeting, Ian and Andy convinced Lisa to write some songs, which then led to the three of them forming the group. Yeah, well, I'd, I presented um, a children's show. Yeah, that's right. for a year. And then after that, I, I got really confused. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And then I met Ian Devaney and Andy Morris. And um, we were all sort of, you know, coming to the end of what, what we were doing anyway. We were all getting a bit bored. Mm. So we formed a band called Blue Zone. And that's, that's when we all started writing songs together. Lisa has said in an interview that before the formation of the group, she was offered a job to present the television show, Crackerjack. 
However, she did not want to do the show and this resulted in her mum throwing her out of the house. Even after Lisa explained to her mum that she had formed a band with Ian and Andy and basically wanted to start a music career, she still threw her out of the house. Yeah, I was offered to do Cracker Jack and, and my mum threw me out of the house because I didn't want to do it. And I said to my mum, oh, I don't want to do Cracker Jack because um, I've decided to be in a band and write songs and, and, and do like pop music and soul music and stuff like this. And she said, well, you're no daughter of mine. <laughs> <laughs> and she threw me out. In a sit down with classic Alvin Sundays, Lisa explained that the three of them would go to a little club in Rochdale to listen to Chicago house music, as this was the type of music that appealed to them. But me and Ian and Andy, when, when we were the band and we was before anything really had taken off, uh, we used to go to a little club in Rochdale, our hometown, and listen to Chicago house music. You know, me and Ian and Andy never danced. We just sat in a, in a line like the three monkeys, you know, and just... <laughs> Just that, just that, all night. <laughs> oh, oh, like this, you know, oh, it's amazing, it's amazing. The group produced a demo and took us around to various record labels. You know, we'd get up at five o'clock in the morning to get the seven o'clock train to London, you know, because coming from a place like Rochdale, London is like the most glamorous place in the world. You know, we'd, we'd go and we'd see record companies and generally get treated like shit. Um, and we loved it. We did not care. We were, all we wanted to do was get a deal. Their chance came when a small independent record label, Rockin' Horse, signed the group. The record label also persuaded the group to change their band name from Blaze to Blue Zone. And in 1986, the group released their first two singles, Love Will Wait. And finest thing. You, you are the finest thing that walked into my life for me. However, none of the singles entered the charts. Also, during this time, Lisa met costume designer Augusto Grassi on holiday in Tunisia. And in 1987, they got married at Sacred Hearts Catholic Church in Rochdale. Lisa moved to live with Augusto in Italy. However, four months later, although some sources say six months later, their marriage ended. Blue Zone would not release another single until a year later. In October 1987, Arista Records, which bought up record label Rockin' Horse, issued the group's next single, On Fire. This became the group's first single to enter the charts, peaking at number 99 on the UK singles charts for a total of one week on the chart. The single also entered the charts in the Netherlands, peaking at number 56 and spending a total of five weeks on the chart. However, just as the single was climbing the charts in the UK, the single was redrawn and banned in the wake of the King's Cross fire, which happens a month later. According to an article on lisastansfield.net, behind the scenes, there were differences of opinion over musical direction between Arista and Blue Zone. The label were keen for the group to pursue a fairly mainstream pop direction, while the group, Lisa, Ian and Andy, wanted to focus on a more soulful, club-orientated side of things, more in line with their musical tastes. The group then released their next single at the beginning of 1988, Thinking About His Baby, about his baby. which beat at number 79 on the UK singles charts, spent a total of six weeks on the chart. The B-side to the single, Big Thing, became popular on the radio and in the clubs and went on to sell over 10,000 copies in one week. We did a B-side for our second single from the album called Big Thing. And it was like a real groove thing. It was one of those things that we did it in 20 minutes. It was like, yeah, it was like throw away. We just, yeah, just stick something on the B side. And we realized when that became absolutely massive in the clubs, like in the underground scene. In July 1988, the group's next single, Jackie, was issued as a single outside the UK. And pizza number 19 in Sweden, number 37 on the US dance chart, and number 54 on the Billboard Hot 100. The release date of the group's debut album, Big Thing, which was recorded in 1987, was pushed back several times by the record label until it was finally released in November 1988. However, the album was released outside of the UK without any further promotion, therefore causing the album not entering the charts at all. In early 1989, 
Ian and Andy were recruited for a cold cut session for their album, What's That Noise? According to the webpage, lisastansfield.net, Lisa went along just for fun and was asked to provide guest vocals on the group's new single, People Hold On, which was released in March 1989. The single peaked at number 11 on the UK singles charts but in a total of 9 weeks on the chart. The single did much better in the US, peaking at number 6 on the US dance chart. People Hold On also entered the charts in several countries including Germany, Belgium and New Zealand. Lisa has said that this was the song that basically launched her career. Was the uh, the cold cut the the sort of launch pad for you? Um, oh god yeah definitely. But no, we didn't, we really didn't think anything was going to happen with it. And we decided to put it out. And that was it. That was it. That was the explosion, wasn't it? That was it. According to Wikipedia, on the strength of the hit, People Hold On, Arista Records signed Lisa to a solo deal. However, according to the webpage, lisastansfield.net, on the strength of the single success, Lisa was persuaded to try her luck as a solo artist. But it is stated that actually Lisa, Ian and Andy all signed to Arista Records and decided to drop the band name Blue Zone and eventually became Lisa Stansfield. In her interview with the Sunday Post in July 2019, Lisa revealed that she never wanted to go solo. I never wanted to go solo, she said. I always wanted to be part of a team. And then suddenly I was in that position and there was nothing I could do about it. I had to get used to it quickly. And so we withdrew the album, the Blue Zone album, and we said, well, we're going to do another album like this. And then I can't remember who it was. And, I, and both Ian and Andy were into this because they didn't like being in the limelight. Someone said, well, why don't we just do it as a solo thing and Lisa just do it? And um, they were like, yeah, yeah, why not? You know, then we can do whatever we want in the studio and she can just go off and do it all on her own. And I was like, no, please, I can't do it on my own. And that that was like, it, it was still blues on, but it was just me. I was just like a representative of the band and I still am really. Nevertheless, Lisa co-wrote all songs for her upcoming album with Ian and Andy, who also produced the album, apart from the single This Is The Right Time, which was produced by Cold Cut and was released in August 1989. This is the right time to believe in love. This is the right time went on to become a commercial success and peaked at number 13 on the UK singles charts but in a total of 8 weeks on the chart. The single also entered the charts internationally, peaking at number 17 in Germany, number 20 in Austria and number 49 in France. Then in October 1989, Lisa released what would be her biggest selling single all around the world. Which beats at number one on the UK singles charts, spent a total of two weeks at the number one spot. The singer, however, spent a total of 14 weeks on the chart. The single was also an international hit, peaking in countries including Austria, Belgium, the US, Switzerland, Australia and France. In a sit-down with Classic Album Sundays, Lisa explained how the song came about. You know, and he said, oh, it's just something that I've been messing about with and I've got a melody, but I can't think of any words. And I'm just whatever comes into my head, you know. And I, 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 and I, 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 oh, what can it be? What can it be? And we went, <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. In the same sit down, Lisa said that when she was in a hotel room at the time All Around the World had been released, she opened up a Billboard magazine and saw that the song had peaked at number one in 12 countries all at the same time. I think at one point I looked in like Billboard magazine or Music Week and like the world charts and I think All Around the World was number one in about 12 countries all at the same time. I'm mean, just sitting all on my own in a hotel room looking at this going, Lisa also told The Guardian in 2019, I was the first white British woman to reach number one on the R&B chart, the American black music chart. The song literally took us around the world four times. I suppose you have to be careful what you sing because you might have to do it. Then at the end of 1989, Lisa released her debut album, Affection, which beats her number two on UK albums charts, spent a total of a staggering 32 weeks on the chart. The album was also an international success, peaking in countries including Sweden, New Zealand, Norway, and the US. This led Lisa being nominated for two Grammy Awards in the categories Best Female Pop Vocal Performance and Best New Artist. Affection went on to sell over 4 million copies worldwide. It has been said that Lisa dedicated the album and the single All Around the World as a tribute to Barry White. 
Four million people bought her debut album, Affection, but few noticed that it was dedicated to Barry White. He said we were, all, you know, it was a tribute to you all around the world, and he said, show your right. In December 1989, Lisa sang in band two's Do They Know It's Christmas, which beat her number one on the UK singles chart. Do they know it's in her interview with Billboard in September 2018, Lisa gave a recollection of events whilst recording Do They Know It's Christmas, particularly with British and Irish pop group Bananarama. She said, well, literally, it's like you're waiting to go to the effing doctors, right? So there's a line of us and then just sing your part and leave. I think I sang around four lines. I always remember when I first started out and first became a little bit famous. I went to a celebrity party. For me, it was really intimidating. I thought I've got to be normal in this situation and I'm really not feeling it at all. I walked up to two of the girls from Bananarama, not Siobhan by the way, because she's really nice. They were really horrible to me. I said, I'm called Lisa Stansfield. I don't know whether you've heard of me. And they were like, oh, right then. They were really rude to me. So later on the band aid thing, they really wanted to stand next to me in the video. And I just kept moving to the left of them. I thought, no, f off. You didn't want to talk to me when I was no one. In February 1990, Lisa released her third single, Live Together. Which beats her number 10 on the UK singles chart, spending a total of six weeks on the chart. The single also entered the charts in countries including the Netherlands, New Zealand, and Austria. In the same month, Lisa not only performed live at the 1990 Brit Awards, but also won the award for Best Newcomer. Lisa Stansfield. Then, in May 1990, Lisa released another single, What Did I Do To You? What did I do to you? Which piece are number 25 on the UK singles charts, spent a total of four weeks on the chart. The single also entered the charts internationally, peaking at number 37 in Belgium, number 38 in the Netherlands, and number 43 in Germany. In the same year, Lisa won the award for New Pop Female Artist of the Year and performed live at the 1990 Billboard Music Awards. But I'm gonna find you. In July that year, Lisa's single, You Can't Deny It, beat at number one on the US R&B charts and number 14 on the Billboard Hot 100. Lisa explained the story behind recording You Can't Deny It on classic album Sundays, where she said that the vocals were actually recorded in a toilet. There's one song and it went to number one on the R&B chart in America and the vocal was done in our toilet. Which song is that? Which song is that? You can't deny okay, it and I you can hear it that and now. everyone says okay, that sound that is, is so classic. In an interview on Q104.3 in 2018, Lisa explained that when she first visited the US, people weren't expecting her to look the way she did. And there was even an occasion where it was assumed that Lisa was the assistant rather than the artist. You know, and uh, nobody knew what I looked like. Yeah. And I came over here, I'm like a little skinny white girl and everybody expected me to look like Aretha Franklin. Right, yeah. You know, and I walked into like um, urban radio stations and, and they'd look at me and they'd say, oh, is Lisa here? <laughs> and I'd say, no, it's me. I'm, I'm not the assistant. Lisa reiterated this in an interview with Blues and Soul magazine. She explained the difficulties she had at the start of her solo career, especially in the US, as a white artist and being mistaken for a black artist due to the R&B infused material she released. Lisa said, well, it was funny in a way because now it could never happen. But then people had never seen me. They had no idea that I was white. They had no idea that I was white and skinny. They thought I was a big black woman. It is unclear whether this June 1990 spread in Spin magazine was somehow an attempt to clear up this confusion as Lisa was described as a trendy white girl who can pass for black and who possesses an uncanny ability for making underground dance styles pop compatible. Lisa eventually embarked on a tour promoting her affection album. <laughs> She also continued writing new music together with Ian and Andy. In the meantime, over in the US, Lisa released a US version to her first single, This Is The Right Time. Right time 
which beats at number two on the Billboard Dance Singles Chart, number 21 on the Billboard Hot 100, and number 35 on the Billboard Adult Contemporary Chart. It was not until years later that Lisa revealed that she wasn't a big fan of her iconic Kiss Curl. In an interview with bbc.co.uk in September 2018, when asked, so you weren't a fan of that look? Lisa replied, it just went on for too long. It was a very stylized haircut and I got sick of it. In fact, in the American video for This Is The Right Time, I cut the curl off. But then she said, well, one of the crew had the same hair as me, so we just kept cutting his hair and pretending it was mine. He was bored by the time we finished. However, Lisa did hint in an interview previously that she would be cutting off the kiss curl prior to the US version of This Is The Right Time. How do you get this to go like that? I don't like need that. to ask that. Um, I just put gel on it and stick it to the side of my head. Does it annoy you? Well, it's starting to annoy me now. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're going to be chopped off quite shortly. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> you heard it first here. Also in 1990, Lisa won several awards, including the Ivor Novello Award for Best Contemporary Song for All Around the World, the Nordoff Robbins Silver Clef Award for Best Newcomer, two DMC Awards for Best Artist and Best Album, and the Variety Club of Great Britain Recording Artist of 1989 Award. Whilst working on the second album in January 1991, Lisa was asked to perform at the second Rock in Rio festival in Brazil. At the Rock in Rio festival, Prince was also in attendance. He had asked someone to approach Lisa as he wanted to talk to her. At first, Lisa refused to go as she was shy, but was quickly encouraged by Ian to go and talk to Prince. She eventually pulled the courage and went over to him. However, whilst Prince was talking to Lisa, he was allegedly flirting with her, which she felt was inappropriate. And because Lisa was really nervous, she became flustered and slapped Prince across the face. We were doing this thing called Rock in Rio in Brazil. Oh yeah, in yeah. Rio. So Prince was doing it, I was doing it, and there was just one club where everyone went in Rio. Afterwards or whatever? Yeah, or, and yeah. everyone would go there in the evening. And there's like a little mezzanine thing. And he does like, well, he did, sorry. He, he did like a bit of a mezzanine VIP area just for Prince. And this guy comes over and he said, oh, Prince has arrived. He's, he's up on the mezzanine and he would really like to meet you. And I'm like, no, no, I'm not going to. Pick jaw because off Because I'm floor. obviously just like <clears throat> really frightened, like. Oh my God! I can't! I can't meet Prince. What am I going to do? And I and I said, Oh no, no, I no, I'm all right. I'll just stay here. And Ian went, Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> he said, Go and meet him. He said, You'll never get another opportunity to meet him. He said, Go and meet him. Don't be so shy. And so I went up, and obviously I'm still really in a state about everything. And he keeps talking to me, and um, and he kept sort of flirting with me, and I thought it was quite inappropriate right and um and because i was really nervous i got really flustered and i slapped him across the face come on he kept looking up at the ceiling and you know when people do that eventually he said oh look up there and i went bang <laughs> lisa also explained what happened the night after the situation with prince and my mother was there. <laughs> and my mother's only five foot tall. Oh, and so Marian. he was on the dance floor, surrounded by all these big, Looking up big at your mother. Because <laughs> he's so tiny like that. But all these bodyguards were so tall, so she just slipped in underneath. <laughs> oh, Marion. <laughs> don't think you want this story retold. <laughs> you slipped she, in and under she Prince. Just went up to him and said, Hello. I'm Lisa's mother. Haven't you got tiny hands? In February 1991, Lisa won the Brit Award for Best British Female. And the winner is Lisa Stansfield. <laughs> then, in October that year, Lisa released what would be the lead single from her upcoming album, Change. If I could change the way. Which beats her number 10 on the UK singles chart, spent a total of seven weeks on the chart. The single also entered the charts in countries including Belgium, Sweden, Australia, and France. There's also a US version of the single Change. Which beats her number 27 on the Billboard Hot 100, spending a total of a staggering 20 weeks on the chart. The single also entered the US RB charts and the US dance charts. 
Then, in November 1991, Lisa released her second album, Real Love, which beat her number three on the UK Albums Chart, spending a total of an incredible 52 weeks on the chart. The album also entered the charts in several countries, including the Netherlands, the US, Sweden, and Austria. Lisa went on to win the DMC Award for Best Album in the same year. At the end of 1991, Lisa released her second single, All Woman. I may not be a lady. which beat her number 20 on the UK singles chart, spent a total of eight weeks on the chart. The single also entered the charts in countries including the US and Belgium. Lisa said in an interview that when they wrote the song, All Woman, she told Ian that she thought it was corny. Ian convinced her that it wasn't. And after she performed the song for the first time in the studio, Lisa actually enjoyed it. I said to Ian, oh, it's a bit corny this, isn't it? And he said, no, he said, it's, it's just you, you know, you've got a complex about these things. Um, I've, I've, when I sang it in the studio for the first time, I've, I really enjoyed singing it. Also in 1991, Lisa performed at several charity-based concerts, including The Simple Truth, which was a concert for Kurdish refugees at Wembley Arena. World AIDS benefit show for Red Hot and Dance. And Big 30 Amnesty International concert. Then she says, I may not be a lady. In February 1992, Lisa won the Brit Award for Best British Female, becoming Lisa's third Brit Award. And the winner is Lisa Stansfield. <laughs> then, in March that year, Lisa released the single Time to Make You Mine, which beats her number 14 on the UK singles chart, spent a total of eight weeks on the chart. The single also entered the charts internationally, peaking at number 33 in Switzerland and number 47 in the Netherlands and Belgium. In April 1992, Lisa performed with Queen and George Michael at the Wembley Stadium. This was a tribute to Queen frontman Freddie Mercury. And in May 1992, Lisa released what will be the last single from the album, Set Your Loving Free. You've got to set your loving free. Which beats at number 28 on the UK singles chart, spent a total of four weeks on the chart. The single also entered the charts internationally, peaking at number 24 on the Billboard Dance Singles Chart, number 42 in the Netherlands, and number 57 in Germany. In the same year, Lisa was invited to write a song for the Bodyguard soundtrack. The song was titled, Someday I'm Coming Back. The single peaked at number 10 on the UK singles chart, spent a total of nine weeks on the chart. The single also entered the charts internationally, peaking at number 39 in Belgium, number 42 in the Netherlands, and number 51 in Germany. Also that year, Lisa embarked on a tour in Europe, Asia, and the US, and released the live at Wembley home video, according to Wikipedia. Don't always be impressed, I However, it was reported that Lisa had to postpone and reschedule her UK tour. Following industry speculation that she was suffering from exhaustion after rigorous promotion scheduled for her top 10 album, Real Love. Although Arista Records refused to comment on the rumours at the time, Lisa's manager, Jazz Summers, released the following press statement. A succession of problems recently occurred. Key personnel, including musicians, were not available for all scheduled dates. There were also unavoidable restrictions on the rehearsal period which led to our decision to change the tour dates to ensure that the show presented are of the highest possible standard. In January 1993, Dionne Warwick released the album Friends Can Be Lovers. Two songs on the album, Much Too Much and Friends Can Be Lovers, were produced by Ian and Andy, whilst Lisa sang background vocals on both tracks. In her interview on Q104.3, Lisa described how it was like working with Dionne Warwick. About working with Dionne Warwick. She was asked. the most gracious, wonderful woman. It was like I, re I just wanted to call her Auntie Dion. Yeah. Because I was a lot younger then. She was probably about a bit younger than I am now. Right. And um, she was just so gorgeous. And she walked in the studio. She travelled like from LA to Rochdale 
which is very different. And um, yeah, a little bit. I'd be, yeah, I come from a normal little town in England, and she came to my town to my studio and it was just such an honor for us right of course know? yeah and she was amazing then in april 1993 lisa entered the charts with the charity ep five live in conjunction with george michael and queen this stemmed from her appearance with both acts at the freddie mercury tribute concert the previous year five live peaked at number 10 on the uk charts spending a total of nine weeks on the chart the ep also entered the charts in countries including austria germany new zealand and norway also, in early 1993, Lisa co-wrote and recorded In All The Right Places, the theme song for the movie Indecent Proposal. The single was released in May 1993. In all the right places. The single peaked at number 8 on the UK singles chart, spent a total of 11 weeks on the chart. The single also peaked at number 24 in the Netherlands and number 63 in Germany. However, it was reported that Lisa was in fact in the running to star in the movie, but did not get the part. She told the Sun newspaper in March 2018, I got a call saying Adrian Lyne wanted to meet me because he was making a movie. I was like, what? It was for Demi Moore's part. And I didn't get it because obviously I wasn't as famous as her. But my career would be over now if I'd got it, as being involved in something like that at such an early stage would have sent me a bit crazy. Then in October 1993, Lisa released what would be the second single from her upcoming album, So Natural. It's so natural. Which beats at number 15 on the UK singles chart, spent a total of five weeks on the chart. The single also beats at number 47 in the Netherlands and number 67 in Germany. And in the following month, Lisa released her third studio album, So Natural, which beats at number 6 on the UK albums chart, spent a total of 15 weeks on the chart. The album also entered the charts in countries including Sweden, Austria and the Netherlands. However, the album was not commercially released in North America, and this album was the last contribution of Andy Morris, who had co-written three songs for the album, together with Lisa and Ian. Then, in December 1993, Lisa released what would be the last single from the album, Little Bit of Heaven. Which peaked at number 32 on the UK singles chart, spent a total of four weeks on the chart. The single also peaked at number 54 in Germany, spent a total of 10 weeks on the chart. Also in 1993, Lisa and Ian took the decision to move from Rochdale to Ireland for a quieter life and to get away from the celebrity glare, according to the webpage lisastansford.net. Why did you decide <laughs> to live uh, just south of Dublin? Oh, we um, recorded the third album in Dublin and I'm really nosy, right? So I, I wanted to know where the Irish live. <laughs> so I was looking in Nesta Agent's window and I said to him, there's some gorgeous houses. I really just want to have a little nosy around. Let's just have a look. And um, so we went one afternoon, walked into this house. It was a gorgeous sunny day, which you don't really get a lot of in Ireland. <laughs> um, looked through the window. The sea was, everything was so calm and peaceful. We had the Wicklow Mountains to the right of us. And it was one of those moments where you don't have to say a word to each other. And we just knew we were going to live there. How much? According to an article in the Daily Mail in April 2018, Lisa said, It got to a point where I just couldn't go out the house or to the shops. It made me twitchy. We ended up living in Ireland. During this time, however, Lisa and Ian made several appearances on movie soundtracks and compilations, including Make It Right from the Beverly Hills 90210, The College Years soundtrack in late 1994. I need you by my side. Which entered the US R&B charts and Dream Away, a duet with American singer-songwriter and record producer Babyface for the movie The Page Master. Dream away, dream away. This single also entered the US R&B charts. Also in 1994, Lisa performed live at the Royal Albert Hall. And I swear. Lisa also recorded the following cover songs, Friday's Child for the album No Prima Donna, the songs of Van Morrison in 1994, Child, can't stop They Can't Take That Away From Me for the album The Glory of Gershwin, also in 1994, Just To Keep You Satisfied for the album Inner City Blues, The Music of Marvin Gaye in 1995, and Take Me Away, which was a duet with Asuka for the album One Voice, The Songs of Change and Asuka in 1996. Also in 1996, Lisa's early recordings were collected and released on the album In Session in September that year. 
At the beginning of 1997, Lisa released People Hold On, the bootleg mixes, which peaked at number four on the UK charts, spending a total of seven weeks on the chart. The single also peaked at number one on the Billboard Dance Club Songs chart, spending a total of one week at the number one spot. The single, however, spent a total of 13 weeks on the chart. In March that year, Lisa released what would be the lead single from her upcoming album, The Real Thing. Got a feeling higher than high. Which beats at number 9 on the UK singles chart, spent a total of 10 weeks on the chart. The single also entered the charts in countries including Belgium and Germany. It took Lisa almost 7 years before releasing her fourth studio album. And at the end of March 1997, Lisa released the album Lisa Stansfield, which beats at number 2 on the UK albums chart, spent a total of a staggering 23 weeks on the chart. The album also entered the charts in several countries including Switzerland, France, Finland, and the US. Due to the success of the Lisa Stansfield album, this prompted Arista Records to release the remix album in June 1998, which beat a number 82 on the Billboard Top R&B Hip Hop Albums chart. The Lisa Stansfield album featured a cover to Barry White's Never Never Gonna Give You Up, which was released in June 1997. The single peaked at number 25 on the UK singles chart, spent a total of six weeks on the chart. The single also entered the charts in the US and Germany. Then, in October 1997, Lisa released what would be the last single from her album, The Line. Which peaked at number 64 on the UK singles chart, spent a total of two weeks on the chart. And in December 1997, Lisa's single, Never Gonna Fall. Darling, what more can I want? Peaked at number one on the Billboard Dance Club Songs chart, spent a total of two weeks at the number one spot. The single, however, spent a total of 12 weeks on the chart. The following year, in April 1998, Lisa's single, I'm Leaving, 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 I'm leaving you. Peaked at number one on the Billboard Dance Club Songs chart, spent a total of one week at the number one spot. The single, however, spent a total of 12 weeks on the chart. Also in the summer of 1998, Lisa and Ian got married in an intimate ceremony which took place in Washington Square Park, New York. A few years after that, we just went to New York, did it very quietly. My mum and dad, his mum. <laughs> in the same year, Lisa released the number one remixes EP, which beats at number 82 on the Billboard Top R&B Hip Hop Albums chart, spending a total of four weeks on the chart. During the same year, Lisa accepted her first major acting role. She worked together with Nick Mead, making her film debut in a British romantic comedy called Swing. The movie was released in May 1999. Together, Lisa and Ian wrote, recorded and produced a compilation soundtrack for the movie, which entered the US jazz charts. Then, in July 1999, Lisa's duet with Barry White for the song The Longer We Make Love was released as a single from his album Staying Power. <laughs> The song was recorded in two versions, one as a duet with Lisa Stansfield and as another duet with Shaka Khan, according to Wikipedia. At the end of the year 2000, Lisa recorded two cover songs, You Keep Me Hanging On for the Motown Mania album, which was released in December 2000, and the song Somewhere My Baby Waits For Me for the Wedding Planner soundtrack, which was released in January 2001. Somewhere my baby In June 2001, Lisa released what would be the first single from her upcoming album, Let's Just Call It Love, which peaked at number 48 on the UK singles chart, spent a total of three weeks on the chart. The single also peaked at number 44 in Italy and number 84 in Switzerland. Almost immediately, Lisa released her fifth studio album, Face Up which beat her number 38 on the UK Albums chart, spent a total of two weeks on the chart. The album also entered the charts in several countries including Switzerland, Germany and Italy. According to Wikipedia, the Face Up album was not released in North America. Although the Face Up album did not perform as well as her previous albums, Lisa embarked on her European tour in 2001 and 2002. Lisa also released a second single from the album, 831. However, the single did not enter the charts. Also in 2002, Lisa made her Western debut in the Monologues. 
However, according to a February 2002 BBC News article, a second run of the monologues was banned in Malaysia. Authorities in the capital city Kuala Lumpur have ruled the show cannot return because of complaints from a number of people. However, it was not known exactly what the complaints were about. Then in February 2003, Lisa released her first Greatest Hits album, titled Biography, The Greatest Hits, which beat number three on the UK albums chart, spent a total of 10 weeks on the chart. The album also entered the charts internationally, peaking at number four in Italy, number 37 in Belgium, number 46 in Germany, and number 58 in Switzerland. Biography, the greatest hits album was almost immediately issued on DVD, which included a duet with Barry White once again, but this time it was for Lisa's hit single, All Around the World. Lisa explained how the duet was meant for a TV show or documentary. They did not go into the studio to record this duet. She also said that they overheard executives say that they should not allow either Barry White or Lisa to drink any wine. So they hid two bottles and secretly drank them. And we did it just specifically for that purpose. It wasn't meant to be a record. It wasn't meant to be anything like that. They said, whatever you do, don't give Mr. White any wine. <laughs> that goes for Miss Stansfield. We overhear you this. And we had two bottles of wine stuffed under the thing and we got, and we got quietly tipsy together. In March and April 2003, Lisa toured Europe to promote the compilation album. No, I don't give a damn what the people say. The biography, Greatest Hits album, completed Lisa's contractual obligation to Aristar slash BMG. As the compilation album did well, in June 2003, Arista Records remastered all of Lisa's studio albums and released a limited edition six CD box set titled The Complete Collection. Then in November 2003, Lisa appeared on the soundtrack for the movie Mona Lisa Smile, singing I've Got the World on a String. I've got the world on a string. In 2004, Lisa recorded the song Too Hot for the Cool and the Gang's The Hits Reloaded, which was released in April 2004. Because it's too hot, too hot, too hot, baby. Lisa also recorded the song Breathe In, Breathe Out, which was a duet with French singer Lam for her self titled album, which was released in September 2004. Breathe in, breathe out. In the same year, Lisa signed with ZTT Records. According to her bio on lisasansfield.net, Lisa desired to break the mold from her previous blend of soul and R&B and decided to go down the pop route instead. And in September 2004, she released her first album under the label, The Moment, which beat at number 57 on the UK albums charts been a total of two weeks on the chart. Then in early 2005, The Moment was issued to the rest of Europe and peaked in several countries including Austria, Switzerland, Spain and France. The album was mainly promoted by two singles, Treat Me Like a Woman which peaked at number 36 in Austria and number 43 in Germany and If I Hadn't Got You, I hadn't got you. which peaked at number 54 in Austria and number 66 in Germany. Lisa also toured Europe in June and July 2005 which completely sold out. Lisa switched back into acting, and in late 2006, she appeared in the British TV drama series Gold Plated, appearing on two episodes as the character Trini, according to imdb.com. However, in the same year, Lisa's world was turned upside down when her mother passed away, causing her to hit an all time low. She then attempted to remedy her pain with a baby, according to the website iloveoldschoolmusic.com. Also that year, soon after her mother's death, Lisa and Ian relocated to New York to start working on pregnancy treatments, including IVF. Lisa went into a little bit more detail in her interview with the Belfast Telegraph in January 2015. She mentioned that after her mother's death, she desperately wanted a baby and it made the evil biological clock start ticking. Lisa also sold their property in Ireland and moved to New York for in vitro fertilization treatments. She said, we did about three rounds of IVF. I just thought after the third one, I can't do this anymore and it always takes you about 10 attempts because you know, you're sticking it in your stomach. But no, I am glad that I didn't have a baby. It was also around this time, whilst in New York, that Lisa decided to give up smoking. In her interview with the News Express in May 2013, Lisa said, We were in New York once and I decided to give up. So I said to Ian, you know what? I'm just going to try to give up, go cold turkey and see what happens. I think I lasted a week and after that, I smoked twice as much as before. 
But then I went to see this other guy for hypnotherapy and literally walked out of his office and never had another cigarette in my life. According to the Mirror newspaper in May 2013, Lisa had quit smoking when she lost the ability to hit some of her famous high notes, allegedly. In 2007, Lisa appeared in another television series, Agatha Christie's Marple, as the character Mary Durant in the episode titled Ordeal by Innocence. She was also dubbed over one of the character's voices, namely Millie, an elf, for the English version of the Finnish animated film Quest for a Heart. She also recorded the song for the movie. I'm on a quest for a heart. Later on, film director and Lisa's friend John Maybury offered her a role as Ruth Williams in the movie The Edge of Love, which also starred Kira Knightley and Sienna Miller. The movie premiered in June 2008 and was well received at the box office. Lisa and Ian eventually moved back to England and settled in North London. In 2009, Lisa and Ian collaborated with movie director Nick Mead, who directed a short film and self-shot documentary called Dean Street Shuffle. The short film slash documentary was about London's Soho life. During this time, Lisa received numerous acting offers, including an opportunity to star in the long-running British soap Coronation Street. However, due to being unable to commit to a three-year role, Lisa turned down the offer. But I think they asked me before, but it was too long and, or I couldn't do it. And then the last time they offered me a part for three years. And it's like I said, I only want to go in the role for three. Yeah. After seven year hiatus from touring and releasing new music, Lisa announced three intimate gigs in the autumn of 2012. Two of the gigs took place in London and one in Manchester. Lisa sang a set of her biggest hits and previewed brand new tracks, which were to be featured on her upcoming album. Due to the positive feedback from her intimate gigs, Lisa announced more tour dates in the UK and across Europe in 2013. In the same year, Lisa, together with her newly formed band, travelled to Indonesia and performed at the Java Jazz Festival. Don't give up a looking, baby. Don't give up praying. Shortly after the festival, Lisa began recording her much-anticipated new album between LA and her recording studio in Rochdale. Whilst in LA, Lisa and Ian collaborated with American drummer and session musician John Robinson and Grammy award-winning orchestrator and trumpeter Jerry Hay, who had initially worked with Lisa and Ian on their very first album, Big Thing. Also in 2013, Lisa did an interview with the Sunday People newspaper. It was reported that the fame and recognition Lisa garnered over the years drove her into a decade of self-imposed exile. She said, I gave up everything and nearly became a f***ing farmer, walking around in headscarf and wellies for 10 years to find my confidence again. She went on to say, the fame thing made me run. It got out of hand and I needed to go away. I'm not the sort of person who, if everyone thinks you're fabulous, you thrive on it. Fame made me insecure and insular. I wanted to run away from being me. I needed to learn to sit back and enjoy my life. It took me 10 years to realise that and get myself straight. According to Wikipedia, Lisa announced in August 2013 that her seventh studio album, Seven, would be released in October 2013. However, in October, it was announced that the dates for the album had been pushed back to January 2014 in Germany and in February 2014 in the UK. The first single from the upcoming album, Can't Dance, premiered on Ken Bruce's BBC Radio 2 show in August 2013 and was released digitally in October 2013. The music video for the second single from the upcoming album, Carry On, premiered in January 2014. And I will carry on. I'll take it as it comes. At the same time, Lisa released her seventh studio album, Seven, in Germany, which beats at number 13 on the charts. Then, in February 2014, Lisa released her album, Seven, in the UK and the rest of Europe, which beats at number 13 on the UK albums charts for a total of four weeks on the chart. The album also peaked at number 25 in Austria, number 42 in Switzerland, and number 133 in Belgium. A deluxe edition of the 7th album quickly followed. 
Lisa also continued to tour Europe in 2014. During her sellout, European tour in 2014, Live in Manchester, which was filmed and recorded at Manchester's Bridgewater Hall, was released as a two CD and DVD set on the 28th of August 2015. Filmmaker and photographer Elaine Constantine gave Lisa a starring role in the independent British film Northern Soul, a film about a nightclub based movement which developed in Northern England in the 1970s. The film was released in October 2014. In the same month, Lisa's album, Seven, was re-released as Seven Plus. This included one new song and 15 remixes. Also in the same month, Ear Music, the international pop rock division of Edsel Records, reissued all the Arista albums of Lisa Stansfield called The Collection, 1989 to 2003. This was a 13 CD and five DVD box set. The collection was also released in the UK under their label, Monkey Natra. In 2015, Lisa began working on her eighth studio album. In April 2016, Lisa appeared for an interview on BBC Breakfast to talk about the death of Prince. Where were you when you heard? Um, I was, I, I actually was, was with friends in the local pub and um, it, I just burst into tears, it was awful. However, Lisa received backlash as it was claimed that she was drunk which her representatives immediately denied. Also, it was reported in the Mirror newspaper that viewers were left aghast and voiced their concerns on Twitter. When Lisa appeared to ask one of the presenters, Naga Munchetti, who danced with Prince on her 21st birthday in a nightclub, did ya or didn't ya? With that, the interview was brought to a swift end, while a shocked Naga responded, how very dare you? Great, amazing, I've been a massive and fan of my life. everyone say, did you or didn't ya? That's where we stop the story, Lisa, uh, uh, but thank you for... How uh, very anyway. dare you! Also in 2016, Lisa picked up the Boys Doll Award for Outstanding Contribution to British Music. After two years in the making, Lisa announced in October 2017 that her new upcoming album, Deeper, is set to be released on the 6th of April 2018. In January 2018, an album teaser track titled Everything was made available for direct download from pre-ordering the album before its official release. Oh, everything I have is yours, baby. The single went straight to number one on the UK soul chart, according to Lisa's bio on lisastansford.net. However, the single Billionaire was announced as the first official single from the album. Who wants to be a as scheduled, the album Deeper was released and peaked at number 15 on the UK Albums Charts but in a total of two weeks on the chart. The album also entered the charts in several countries including Germany, Switzerland and Spain. In the same year, Lisa embarked on her tour in the UK and Europe after the release of her album. Over in the US, Lisa's single, Never Ever, beat her number six on the Billboard Dance Club Songs chart, spending a total of 13 weeks on the chart. Also in the US, Lisa embarked on her North American tour that same year. The tour began in October. <laughs> In 2019, Lisa embarked on her Affection 30th Anniversary Tour.
She has also continued to perform at various shows since Lisa is pretty active on Instagram and X, formerly known as Twitter, and appears to be doing well. And that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you've all enjoyed. For those of you who made it this far, thank you so much for sticking around. Don't forget to like the video, share the video, subscribe, comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you once again for the request and I'll see you all in my next video. Over and out.